What's up everybody, my name's Addy and welcome to Kit Guru. I'm super excited for today's review. My full conversion to PC gaming came in the early 2000s with the birth of MMOs. And let's just say I was hooked. I spent tens of thousands of hours playing MMOs and my biggest gripe was actually having to use the top 12 button keyboard row for all of my skills and abilities. I always wished that there would be a better way. So you can imagine my hype when I heard that Razer announced the Naga back in 2009. I bought it instantly and it changed my PC gaming life forever really. I've had various versions of the Naga since, but it was only a few months ago that I actually jumped ship and started using the Corsair Scimitar Elite instead. So Razer have just released the Naga Pro wireless at an insane $149.99, but is it enough to bring me back to my roots? Let's find out. If you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru, please consider supporting us for free by smashing that subscribe button down below. And whilst you're there, don't forget to hit like too. Okay, nostalgia aside, I've always loved the Razer Naga and the last variation that I owned, the Trinity, was exceptional, despite my concerns about the removable side panels. The Naga Pro Wireless is essentially a Naga Trinity, but with a couple of extra tweaks. So the 150 pound price tag is very high, but let's just try and justify it maybe. We essentially have three mice in one as it comes with three interchangeable panels that have totally changed the look and feel and functionality of this mouse. We get the OG 12 button MMO panel, we get an FPS panel with simple forward and back buttons, and finally we have a new contender, a new panel that replaces the circular MOBA panel which was found on the Trinity. This new panel is aimed at the rise of the more popular than ever Battle Royale games. So here we have a peculiar six button design. The first impressions are that it looks a little bit odd, but in use it's actually really comfortable and easily accessible. More on these panels later. We get a 1.8 meter braided speed flex cable, so you can use the mouse wired if you do wish so. This is a USB-A to micro USB, and I'm disappointed that there's no USB-C. It's 2020, why are we still getting micro USB on a 150 pound product? The cable itself is very good quality though, insanely flexible with little to no kinking at all. But as I've mentioned in previous reviews, if there's a wireless option, then I'm gonna use that and not use a cable at all. For those that do like wireless mice though, you will enjoy the Speedflex upgrade because the Trinity's cable was pretty stiff in my opinion. Next, we get a USB dongle adapter. This lets you place the wireless dongle into the adapter and then use the Speedflex cable as an extension lead. And I'm glad that they've included this because it's good for those that may have their PCs out of the way, but you can also disconnect the adapter and then plug the cable straight into your mouse to charge it, which is pretty cool. That's not the only way that you can charge the Naga Pro, however. If you have Razer's charging dock for the Viper Ultimate or Basilisk Ultimate, then you can charge it via that too. And again, this is something I'm disappointed with though, because the Viper and Basilisk Ultimate come included with a dock, but if you don't own either of those, then the dock alone costs four $49.99. If you purchase the Naga Pro directly from Razer's website, then the dock will only cost you £20 extra because they've got a deal on at the minute, but that still totals $169.99. So for a £150 mouse, I'm expecting this to be included. Am I asking too much here? Let me know down in the comments. So the Naga Pro is huge. It's a heavyweight mouse weighing in at 117 grams and the dimensions are 119 by 74.5 by 43 millimeters. This isn't an issue for me though, since I've been using large heavy mice for longer than I can remember. Despite its size, it's actually smaller and lighter than the Corsair Scimitar RGB Elite, which I'm currently using and I've also reviewed too. So make sure you check out that review after watching this one. It's pretty much identical to the Naga Trinity in aesthetics and design, and I'm thankful for that. It's a right-handed only ergonomic design that slopes down to the right-hand side. The top shell has a slightly coarse texture, and the shell extends to the primary buttons with comfort grooves on. On the right, we have a smooth plastic texture and a large pinky support with small textured rubber grips. The same smooth plastic can be found on both the FPS and Battle Royale interchangeable right side panels too, along 
with those rubber grips. The Corsair Scimitar Elite suffers from being a total grease magnet due to the rubber coating over the top of the shell, but the Naga Pro luckily doesn't suffer from this at all, and it doesn't attract fingerprints either. From the side, we see it has a large hump towards the back palm rest. On the front, we have no fancy designs, just plastic caps and the micro USB port tucked away too. Back on top, we have a tiny gloss strip with the scroll wheel and DPI buttons. The scroll wheel is insanely textured with rubber and the grip support is just amazing. It moves in tactile increments that aren't too loose or too stiff either. There's definitely more resistance in this one compared to the Scimitar Elite, but I do prefer this. The Naga Trinity also lets you click the scroll wheel from left and right as extra buttons too, which the Scimitar Elite lacks. So RGB zones can be found on the back with Razer's triple-headed snake logo. The scroll wheel and numbered buttons on the side panels as well. These can be customized via the Synapse software. On the bottom of the mouse, you can see just how wide this mouse is. There's a lot of information here, but the important bits are there's five zone, 100% PTFE glide pads in each corner and around the sensor as well. You can also see the cutout and the connectors to charge the mouse via Razer's expensive dock that I did I mention isn't included. We also have a small cutout to easily remove the side panels and there's also a profile switch button and connectivity switch too. In terms of comfort, I absolutely love it. It's my favorite large mouse design. I'm not sure if it's just down to the fact that I've used so many Naga mice over the past 11 years, but it feels incredibly natural in my hand as if it's been specifically molded for it. Palm grip, which is the grip I use for mundane PC usage, feels excellent. Claw grip, which I use for gaming, is just as comfortable, and this also helps me to reach those sort of further back row of buttons on the MMO panel. Fingertip grip isn't for me, but that's mainly because the mouse is so large. I find fingertip grip ruins my accuracy since I have to lift my thumb entirely off to get to the button that I want to use. But on the flip side, if I have the FPS side panel attached, then fingertip grip is absolutely fine because there's only the standard forward and back buttons to worry about instead of 12. The only negative for FPS players here is the heavy weight that I mentioned earlier. The Naga Pro suits me just fine, but for those that prefer ultra lightweight mice, this definitely isn't for you. Changing panels is easy. Use the notch on the bottom to pull the panel off. This takes a bit of force because the panels are held on via super strong magnets and this is excellent as they really hold on to the mouse making it feel like a solid construction when any panel is attached. Once the panel is removed, you'll find the USB-A dongle hidden in the pocket, which is convenient for travel. You can also see the 16 pin connectors for the panels. The panels themselves have the same magnets and connector points on the inside. Build quality is excellent. There's no flex at all on the top shell and on the side panels. With the FPS and Battle Royale panels attached, I can't actuate the buttons by squeezing hard at all. Shaking the mouse hard also doesn't cause any rattling from the buttons, even when the MMO panel is attached. There are no sharp edges in sight either, and none of the panel's buttons are loose. So running your finger over them doesn't cause any rattling or noise whatsoever. It's just great all round and for that whopping £150 price tag I'd honestly expect no less really. Before we do a sound test let's talk about button feel. So both primary buttons sadly do suffer from mild pre and post travel but honestly it's pretty much the same as what I found on the Scimitar Elite. There's no pre or post travel on the scroll wheel click until you get to the left and right clicks of the wheel. In this case there's slight post travel. The two top DPI buttons are are nice and clicky without any travel either. Jumping over to the panels buttons, I can instantly notice a difference from when I owned the Trinity. The Trinity's buttons were slightly inconsistent in feel, with some of them being clicky, whereas others felt spongy to me and it always bothered me. The Naga Pro panel buttons are infinitely nicer than before. Every single button is clicky with instant feedback and no travel. This is consistent across the MMO and Battle Royale panels, but the FPS panel does suffer slightly from post travel. Here's a sound test for all the buttons for you.
Connectivity wise, we have wired, Bluetooth low energy and hyperspeed 2.4 gigahertz wireless, easily set by the switch on the base of the mouse. Bluetooth is great for general use as it uses less power, giving you 150 hours battery life, but you also get less performance here with slower polling rate. Hyperspeed wireless is the selling point, which Razer claims offers 25% faster technology over any other wireless tech. This gives you 100 hours battery life, but also no crippling performance at all. It automatically jumps between available signals to ensure that a stable connection is always there, even in congested areas. I love these new wireless capabilities, and just like Corsair's Slipstream Wireless, it performs excellently. I had no lag, cutouts, jitter, or anything at all during my testing, and to me, it's just as reliable as wired. So the primary buttons feature Razer optical mouse switches. This uses an infrared light beam rather than a physical contact switch, which could also be found in Razer's Viper range. The older Naga Trinity had mechanical switches, so that is another change. According to Razer, mechanical switches have an average of 50 million click lifespan, whereas these have 70 million click. That's a large increase in durability. As there's no physical switch, this also means Razer's optical switches don't suffer from debounce delay, so the response time is 0.2 milliseconds, or three times faster than a mechanical switch. In terms of use, they feel snappy, super fast, and responsive. It could be a placebo, but they definitely feel quicker and more accurate to me. The Naga Pro has Razer's Focus Plus optical sensor made alongside PixArt, with tracking speeds up to a whopping 650 IPS, max of 20,000 DPI, and a claimed 99.6% resolution accuracy. This is an improvement over the Trinity in all areas, but the Focus Plus sensor has a few extra features, including smart tracking that automatically calibrates your mouse surface to improve lift-off distance, asymmetric cutoff to set landing distance of one millimeter, and motion sync that synchronizes the data sent and received by your PC for more consistent tracking. We'll test the liftoff distance when we discuss software, as there's various options there to tweak. So this all sounds great on paper, but how does it perform? Well, first off, the glide pads feel amazingly smooth, so they definitely help me with the feel of the mouse during my testing, especially in Elder Scrolls Online, which is my current go-to MMO, and also Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I felt confident that I'd have no issues at all with a Focus Plus sensor with those optical switches paired with hyperspeed wireless, and I was right. The mouse performed excellently no matter what DPI stage I'd set. All round, it was super responsive with no issues whatsoever that I came across. Each panel also led to accurate inputs without any delay either. Razer Synapse 3 is what you'll need to take full advantage of the Naga Pro, along with up to five onboard profiles saved to the mouse. This can be switched via the profile button on the base of the mouse. Customize tab shows you which panel you have attached and also lets you fully take advantage of the assignable buttons on the mouse mouse and all the panels. Click the button on the mouse or the panel that you want to change and you'll see options for remapping keyboard functions, launching programs, shortcuts, almost anything you can think of and it's incredibly intuitive. Performance tab lets you enable or disable DPI stages and polling rate. Lighting tab lets you change brightness, when to turn LEDs off and change effects. Power tab lets you set sleep mode when idle and low powered modes. And finally, calibration lets you manually calibrate your surface or you can enable smart tracking. I'm excited by this as being able to manually change the tracking is absolutely excellent. It really lets you customize your usage and exactly how you want to use it. This lets you set the liftoff distance from one, two or three millimeters. Asymmetric cutoff lets you set landing distance from one to three millimeters with a liftoff distance of two millimeters. So let's test that liftoff distance. I'll test this by stacking multiple disks to see when the sensor stops tracking. I'll test this with smart tracking set to one, two and three millimeters to see what we get. Set to one millimeter, the mouse stops tracking at one disc height, set to two millimeter, stops at two discs height, and set to three millimeter, stops at three discs height. This is exactly what I wanted to see when changing the tracking distance, so that's a big thumbs up from me. I've mentioned the Corsair Scimitar Elite throughout this review, so which should you get? Remember the Naga Pro is £150, whereas the Scimitar Elite is literally half the price at £75. So make sure to check my review of it first, but the Scimitar is an excellent wired only mouse with an adjustable side panel that lets you place the number pad further forward or backwards to aid comfort. If you're on a tighter budget, get the Scimitar. If you're only after a dedicated MMO mouse, 
get the scimitar. If you're like me that has separate mice for FPS and MMO gaming, then get the Naga Pro because it does everything you need for any style of gaming. If money is no issue, you prefer wireless or just want the best bet is going, then these are good reasons to 100% get the Naga Pro. So in conclusion, there's nothing really bad to say about the Naga Pro as a product. It ticks all the boxes of a high-end mouse and it really is your one-stop shop for whatever your gaming preference is, as neither of the panels feel like an afterthought. As I mentioned before, lightweight mice users won't be a fan, but if you like larger, heavier mice, then you will love it. Excellent build quality, great design and aesthetics, superb performance across the board without any compromises. It is insanely pricey and I'm disappointed that it doesn't come with the Razer dock, but other than that, it is excellent. Has Razer won me back with the Naga Pro? <laughs> yeah, yes it has. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, check out our merch down below, check out our website daily for tech news. This is Kit Guru. I'm Andy, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.